Hi, everyone. My name is Jared Strange. I'm here at the National Theater in Washington, DC, and I'm the dramaturg for our Teens Behind the Scenes program. Now, ordinarily, we would be coming to you, or you would be coming to us, rather, to see some of the great shows passing through the theater here, and I would be taking time out of the uh, post-evening uh, afters to meet with some of the artists and to talk with you and them about their work, what drives them, what motivates them, and what they produced on the stage for us. Obviously, that's not really an option now, but thankfully, we have a wonderful, amazing artist who has made time out of her day to speak with us, and I'm so excited to introduce to you the amazing Cheetah Rivera. Cheetah Rivera hello. is, pardon? I, I just said hello. <laughs> hello, it's wonderful to see you. Thank you so much again for making time for your day, time for us rather, out of your day. Um, Cheetah Rivera is a true theatrical icon. She is one of Broadway's greatest triple threat talents. She's one of the most nominated performers in Tony Award history, having earned 10 nominations and won twice and received the 2018 Special Tony Award for Lifetime Achievement in the Theater. She is a trained ballerina starting from the age of nine and then received a scholarship from the School of American Ballet from the legendary choreographer, George Balanchine. She had his first appearance at age 17 was as a principal dancer in Call Me Madam. I'm very interested in hearing how you got that part. And her electric <laughs> performance as Anita in the original Broadway premiere of West Side Story brought her great stardom. That's actually what we're gonna be talking a lot about today. Her career is highlighted by starring roles in Bye Bye Birdie, The Rink, for which she won her first Tony Award, Chicago, the classic Chicago, Jerry's Girls, Kiss of the Spider Woman, for which she won her second Tony Award, Nine, Cheetah Rivera, The Dancer's Life, and The Visit, which is based on one of my all-time favorite plays. She has headlined several concerts around the world and her career retrospective, Cheetah Rivera, A Lot of Living to Do, was featured on PBS's Great Performances series in 2015. Cheetah was also awarded the coveted Kennedy Center Honors in 2002, received the Presidential Medal of Freedom from President Barack Obama in 2009, and was honored as a living landmark by the New York Landmarks Conservancy in 2018. Whew, it's a lot, lot of great, wonderful success to keep up with. But for all of that, for all her successes, her most treasured production is her daughter, singer, dancer, choreographer, Lisa Mordente. That's right. Absolutely. But I actually want to start at the beginning because I think there's a very special thing for us here in D.C. You are a Washington, D.C. native, right? That's right. That's right. Absolutely. I was born at 2134 Flagler Place, Northwest, mm -hmm. and... Um, it was a, a house on the corner. It was a mixed neighborhood. It was it very energized with a lot of kids. We used to run and, and play kick the can and, and, mm -hmm. and challenge each other uh, all the time on bicycles and skates and <clears throat> walk the back fences. And I used to beat up with guys, not with mm -hmm. my fist, but with, with my skates or my bicycle. <clears throat> Pardon me, I, I'm from a family of five. <clears throat> two brothers and and uh, two sisters, uh, two of which we've lost. <clears throat> and um, uh, you know, it was uh, my dad died when I was uh, seven years old, mm. and um, I had a wonderful mother. Um, I I have all those reminders around me. Uh, mm. I was just thinking. I was looking up over at mother's picture. I said, if I had thought about it, I'd have all those things to show you. Um, <clears throat> But DC um, was good to me mm. um, as a child. And um, I studied with Doris Jones, uh, a wonderful ballet teacher um, and who still has a school. She has passed on, she and Miss, and Miss Haywood, Claire Haywood have passed on, but they, they've left their wonderful school and I'm sure the teachers are wonderful. And, um, and they're, they're grooming, you know, new ballet dancers. I don't know if they've extended their teachings to tap or jazz. I wouldn't think so. It was strictly ballet when I was there. And it was because I was such a tomboy at home that I was jumping from sofa to chair to sofa, and I jumped over the coffee table and I didn't make it all the way. And I went into the coffee table and mother said, that's it, out of the house she goes. And mother put me in to kind of bring in all of this energy. 
uh, she put me in Miss Jones's ballet school, mm. <clears throat> and that saved my life. I, I really think so. Uh, 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 it certainly created um, or started um, some of those wonderful things that you just described that I was lucky enough to be available for. Mm. Uh, Mr. Balanchine came down to DC because he'd heard about the students that Miss Jones and Miss Hayward were um, were teaching and uh, the caliber of student and um, or I should say the caliber of teaching mm. and because um, uh, we we just obey that's what I tell the kids just listen to your teachers do as they say because they know obey. And then you find out, as you have your own experiences, what works for you and what does not, what is truth and what is not for you. But um, uh, Mr. Balanchine sent a scout down and uh, Lewis Johnson, who was passed on, was the very first uh, African-American uh, male dancer in New York City Ballet. He was extraordinary and he was my partner. And I am, you know, everybody wants to dress me in the red sequin dress that split mm -hmm. up the side when actually I really want to be a clown. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I love laughing more than anything else, mm -hmm. but um, they wanted to put me in those things. Um, I, I, I finally learned that I was all of that, you know. Right. Um, but um, so Lewis and I won a scholarship to New York City Ballet. Uh, to study in the school. And when we got there, Miss Jones went with me and um, I got out the elevator, we got out of the elevator and a beautiful blonde, blue-eyed, long-legged Balanchine ballerina passed me and I panicked. And I said to Miss Jones, oh, what, what am I gonna do? I, I am totally the opposite. I I'm so frightened. And she looked at me and said, Cheetah, or I don't know whether she was calling me Conchita at that time or Dolores, mm -hmm. because my real name is Dolores Conchita Figueroa del Rivero. And um, I think I was going by Conchita del Rivero then. Um, she said, you just stay in your own lane. Mm -hmm. you, you stay, you don't attempt to go to the left or to the right, you just stay and focus on what is good for you what you want to express. And um, I've, kept, I've, told, I've told that story to the kids um, that I, I, I've been fortunate enough to talk to and they have been curious enough to ask, um, mm -hmm. which is very, very important. And, um, uh, you know, so I, I went with a friend of mine, Helen, I can't remember her last name. And uh, she was studying at the school and she was not on scholarship. And um, she asked, she, she was going for the audition for Call Me Madam, uh, uh, directed and choreographed by Jerome Robbins. And um, she asked me if I would go with her to keep her company and give her courage. And I said, absolutely. And this is another thing I tell the kids. Fear is um, an interesting element to life. It is important you have to face it because of, around the corner it's going to meet you again so just face it and find out what you've got um because i didn't need it and i was just there to support um i moved right down front i mean you know i i took the audition also and my friend helen was in the back mm. Fear had really gotten a hold of her. And to make a long story short, I got the job and Helen didn't. Yeah. Uh, oh, so how I got West Side was I, um, I was in Mr. Wonderful and the stage manager and his wife, Dee Dee Ryan, her, her name was, um, they both said to me, you know, there's a show about Latins, Puerto Ricans, called, I think they said West Side. I don't think they said East Side Story, but because um, it changed his name along the way. And, um, and and I think you should have auditioned for it. And um, my agent at the time, I believe was Dick Seth, wonderful agent. 
And he was the mouth. I had no mouth. Mm -hmm. I just danced my way into whatever it was. I, and um, so I said, okay, okay. And uh, he made the arrangements. I auditioned. I danced. At that time, it was 250 people, you know. A lot of people came to those auditions. And, um, and I made it through all the auditions. Then we had to, um, which of course was exciting because it was Latin rhythms. Mm. Plus it was, it was Jerome Rock, you know. Was, yeah. And, yeah, and, um, and so um, then they had to match us up. <clears throat> and uh, Kenny Leroy, was the fellow that had obviously made it through all the other auditions and made it to the part of Bernardo. And they matched me up with him. Uh, when I say match, I, I mean, you know what I mean, but um, we had to audition together mm. to see how we looked together, to see how we felt each other. And um, we liked each other a lot. And um, we got the job. Um, I got to, to know Larry Kurt during that time and Carol Lawrence. Mm -hmm. And uh, it got to be, um, we, we want this job now. We like this. We like the story of Romeo and Juliet done in modern time. And all of this, unfortunately, it still exists today. Um, this prejudice um, situation and, um, but it was romantic, exciting, violent. It was everything. Mm. And it was led by an extraordinary genius, surrounded by extraordinary geniuses. Right, it's incredible. It, oh, in, incredible. And, it, and uh, I don't think Stephen Sondheim was Stephen Sondheim at that time. You know, he was young. Yeah, it was like all of us. From what I I've met, written, he he used to make fun of his own work on West Side Story because, of course, he grew in, into something else. But you know, we should all be so lucky that West Side Story is like the lyrics of that is the lowest it gets for us. Exactly, going up and up and up. But yeah, just for the students at home, this was Jerome Robbins, who is an incredible choreographer director. You'll learn about him if you read about uh, Fiddler on the Roof, our work on Fiddler on the Roof as well, and. Yeah. Leonard Bernstein, incredible composer and music educator, and Arthur Lawrence, incredible, uh, very successful playwright and director. You, you know, it was just a huge, huge talent. Um, but I think what's so interesting about West Side Story is that it was really a big deal for dance in musical theater. This pushed the envelope on dance, which is not a surprise when you consider Jerome Robbins was involved. But what is that? What was that like for you? Because as I understand it, he cast mostly dancers uh, oh, as, yeah. as his cast. And so, what what felt different about working on this particular show that seemed like it was really going to push the envelope for dance and musical theater? Well, we never thought of pushing envelopes. Mm. We thought of of, of, of doing it exactly what this because every variation he gave us was something exciting. Mm. Um, and also, by the way, there was Peter Gennaro, mm. who was an extraordinary stylist. Um, he had his own very special way of doing things. He was fast, he was, um, he was funny, he was uh, um, rhythmical. He learned, he used to say, he learned what he knew in the kitchens of New Orleans, where he was born, uh, from the black cooks and the way, and you you just get this fabulous picture of them in the back with trays and food and everything and mm. and music going and them with their feet moving and um, and and just learning from each other. But um, dance, you know, dance is acting without yeah. words. This was an extension. This was, this was all us. It was all on our shoulders. It was all our responsibility. I'll never forget um, Jerry 
calling us and uh, in, in a circle every day. We took class every day, first of all. And um, then he would, um, he would ask us who we were. Mm -hmm. He would ask us about our background. He would ask, and we had to make up stories about who we were so that when we existed in that play, we were somebody. Mm -hmm. We were not dancers that were playing a part that you know the author had written. We were more than that. And we, uh, you know, uh, there's so much to, to say. Um, I was just talking about, thinking about a boy like that. Mm. And, uh, you know, um, Jerry Friedman, who was Jerry Robbins' assistant with the book, um, he was extraordinary. And he, he had me in a, another room and uh, I was singing a boy like that. I obviously was not saying those words as they were meant to be sung. How could you expect it? I just got it. And um, I wouldn't have known what to do anyhow. And um, as I sang, I, I finished it. And he then said to me, Gina, what's, uh, what's your brother's name, Julio? And your other brother's name, Armando? I said, yeah. He said, you, you're pretty tight with them, aren't you? I mean, you really love your, and I suddenly caught it. I got, I said, I know what you're doing. I know, and I took it as a joke, but I knew that he was serious and I started to laugh. And mm. he said, well, just let's do the song. Would you do the song over? And I, he said, well, now sing, Cheetah. And I started to say, and all of a sudden my brother's faces came in my head and I started to sing those lyrics. Mm. And they started, they reached my soul. They reached my heart. And, I, and I, as I was singing it, because I'm a dancer, I never give up. I was backing out of the room and I was backing up as I was singing and he said, mm -hmm. keep singing and I'm backing up and I get practically to the door. I guess what was going through me was I am being exposed. Mm -hmm. My inner soul is being exposed right now. Mm -hmm. And I had to break that. I, 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 that had to happen mm -hmm. um, because I, I, I was a dancer who never spoke. Wow. You know, it was just, I hope the, the kids get this. Well, I, I, should I not call them kids? Students. <laughs> students, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, students. <laughs> they won't. <laughs> uh, um, I, I hope they get it, you know, because you have to let that happen. You mm. must let that happen. You must trust. And um, I trusted Jerry. Mm. Yeah, and, that's important. Trust you know, is a big part of it. It's yeah. A big part of it. And I think it's important for the students too to understand when we talk about triple threat, we're talking about someone who can sing and can act and can dance, but that's not one at a time. You know, these are three things that all go together. And it has to be, you have to dance as Anita and sing as Anita and act as Anita. And so it seems like you would want to trust somebody who is going to bring all of these things out of you. And this was and that's and that is how that is the luck that you have when you work with a Jerome Robbins, a, 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 a Leonard Bernstein, and Stephen Sondheim, and an Arthur Lawrence. So, in yeah. addition to working with great people like Bernstein and Robbins and so on, you're also in this as a team. You have your castmates, your fellow dancers, your singers, your actors. Can you talk about working with them? I, if, if I understand correctly, the gangs uh, that we see on stage. We're also uh, we're also at present in the rehearsal room, but there's also some some fraternizing across the lines, if I understand uh, it correctly. Just just well, as and, I've heard. Yeah, well, Jerry told us that we were not to talk to each other during rehearsals. We were not to uh, 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 you know be friends with these this other because we did not like them. Mm. And, and we had to take that play seriously on and off the stage. 
And so we absolutely did. Um, but, but I went one further. I, um, I, um, uh, 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 how, how should I say it first? Um, <laughs> I admired, I admired um, uh, a, a dancer that was a jet, mm. an Italian. He would fly. His name was Tony Mordente. He would, he could fly. I not only <laughs> met him, I married him, and I had a baby. <laughs> my favorite production, yeah. Lisa, Lisa. And um, I just talked to him, uh, New Year's Eve, mm. and, uh, and he went on to do wonderful, as, as did everybody in, in, mm. in that show. But uh, an interesting, another interesting thing that I, that I found, other people found was interesting, and uh, I do now, um, at the curtain would come down, I would, there were two bodies on the stage. I was obviously on stage left because I stepped over Mickey Callan, who was Riff. I stepped over his body and went over to uh, Bernardo, Kenny Leroy, mm -hmm. helped him up, brushed his clothes off, and then we went off for intermission. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> that was just my way of connecting, uh, you know, me to the play. Even when the curtain came down in intermission, so um, I don't know. So many things happen. Yeah. Well, it seems like a, a life imitating art moment. A little. Absolutely, it was. Yeah. It was exactly that. Exactly. And I felt it was important for me to just to be there. Uh, I, I don't know why. It, it wasn't important, but it was to me. Yeah, you know, you've had such successful collaborations, but one thing I want to impress on the students and I've done in previous work is that, you know, a lot of shows take a lot of work, particularly if you want to go to Broadway, if you want to be in a musical and they go around the country and they get workshopped and rehearsed and rehearsed. And some of them go on to amazing success like West Side Story in Chicago, et cetera. And some of them don't. And so for you, based on your experience, what is the difference between a show that has all of the talent, great people, and comes off great and another show also great talent also great people and it just doesn't what's the uh, uh, there is no difference you know i tell them first of all i don't read reviews <clears throat> i live in that rehearsal hall and on that stage with that audience and mm. with all, with all of the, the people around me telling the story that terence or whomever wrote the book wants me to tell <clears throat> um, I, uh, you know, West Side lost to Music Man, lost mm -hmm. the Tony. So who's to say anything? You have to believe in yourself. You have mm -hmm. to believe in what you're doing. You can't let somebody else tell you that you're lesser. You know, the, uh, you have to, and you can you can make an audience believe what you believe because <clears throat> you do it to its fullest, to its uh, honesty, to its truth, I should say. Um, just believe in what you're doing is really what I'm saying. Don't let anybody tell you that you're less than something else. Mm -hmm. it, it's, a, a, it's wonderful getting medals and all of that sort of stuff, but it's better working with your artists, friends, and uh, your, and working with an, for an audience and telling the story and learning. That's more important than any medal or any, you know, uh, I mean, I'm very grateful for them, very grateful, but, but I, I think a lot of that might be luck. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I, I think it takes some talent and work. Well, it does take some, but there are m millions of people. Their time just yeah. isn't yet. Yeah. It's timing. It's ti a lot of it is is timing. timing. You know. Yeah. Good. Yeah. It's true. Well, speaking of time, uh, you know, we're we're about to wrap up, but I want to make sure we touch on um, the impact and the legacy of West Side Story. Like I said, 
there's been a recent Broadway production directed by Eva Van Hove uh, with lots of media, lots of film behind it. Uh, Steven Spielberg is making a new film. Uh, it's, there have been bilingual versions that have been presented. It's been done in hundreds of countries, been translated into all these languages. High schools do it, colleges do it, on so, and on. What's, what keeps people coming back to West Side Story? Is it the dance? Is it the story? What is it? Well, it's, I think, as I said earlier, unfortunately, we still have that problem mm. of, uh, you know, of differences. Uh, Spider-Woman was, was the same thing, Kiss of the Spider-Woman, um, differences, and people not exe accepting the differences. Um, if, I, I don't know, I mean, because I, See, I think the original was the, was the, the purest. Mm. It came right from them. Um, a great piece can live forever. And as long as they, I don't see them. I, I don't go. Mm. Um, really? I don't like, well, I don't like to critique them. <laughs> you know, I, I you know, um, I, I don't like you would want to be back up there again. Is that is that part of it? I mean, oh, it's part of it, you know. Heck yes. Mm. I mean, I I would happily, <clears throat> and I never thought of myself as a choreographer or a director, but I but I could get into the um, exploring of the characters easily. Now, I could give what I know that, from Jerry and from Arthur. Um, I could give it to the students. I could explain it to them. So they would have just have another variation mm -hmm. um, or something else to go by, not just because it, 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 it's hard. Rehearsals are hard to explore mm -hmm. um, something that you don't know at all. Um, and, 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 and our rehearsal time was, I think, eight weeks. Mm -hmm. I think we either had six or eight. Yeah. It, it was unprecedented. So that yeah. is, there you are. You need time and be patient, you know. Um, but um, I, I, I don't know really what you're saying, except um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad the story um, you know, it, it's done in high schools and junior high schools. I want people to get that experience and to hear those words and to hear that music. I just am not much for it being done on a screen. Mm. I like the actors too. Mm. You want to be there, be close. Uh, yeah, mm. yeah. We had minimal sets just enough to get around and we had the stage, we had space, um, uh, you know, and, and, but when you, when you have too much of other things, lighting and mm. the star is the book, that's mm. the star. Uh, the story is the star, mm. how you get that story told is up to you and your imagination and your respect mm. for what was. You gotta have respect for what was. Right. I think you do. <laughs> I don't, you gotta, I do, you know, and it has worked for me. I can only speak for myself. Well, I mean, you, you speak with a lot of authority. It's worked for you a lot of times and we're so great. And, and I'm willing, I'm, I'm willing to share it. Yeah. I'm willing to talk about it and willing to, I'm not, I'm not holding anything close and, or I didn't do anything am amazing. Uh, I just did as I was told <laughs> 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 because I had great people telling me and why would I think I know more than you? Yeah. Yeah. Why? I think if that's... I did, then I, what? Well, I, I think that's that's great. I mean, oh, I'm I thinking you. about if we had students here, what would you what would you want to tell them? And you've had given them a lot to think on. Believe in yourself. You know, the work is there, the hard work is there, but knowing 
uh, what your soul wants, what you desire, but also listening to the wisdom and really having respect for the people who've been there. You know, I think these are good things. Hold to, it. Uh, pardon? And be patient. Yeah, be patient yeah. and enjoy it. Really enjoy it. Really, like, really be curious. Mm. Really fill yourself with the with the the, the craft of other people that mm. are giving it to you. You know, it's just exciting. God, I wish I were twenty two again. <laughs> <laughs> you just do it all over again. You start to finish. I do it all over again. Yeah. Are you working That's on anything exactly. now? Do you have anything exciting coming up? No, I'm hoping that uh, I will be able to do one more show with all my guys, oh, my the guys I've danced for years, mm -hmm. and they're all over 40, and they're in shape, and they're gorgeous, and they're mm -hmm. they, and they're raring to go. And um, why wouldn't you know? Why wouldn't we want to be together and do our stuff? and give it back to the give it back to the world. We'd, oh, that'd be great. But yeah. I wish you the very, 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 very best. Yes, thank you, you so know, much. I, I wish that we had people here with us. You know, we're making do with what we can. So do I. Time. But, you know, hopefully maybe we'll, you'll get to come back to Washington sometime. Maybe you'll bring your show with all your, your famous maybe. men with you. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> Yeah. Take care. Thank you once again. It was wonderful to meet you. I'm going to go ahead and stop our recording. Students, check out the rest of the website, learn more about this wonderful story. And thank you again to Cheetah Rivera.